I, I think we see a very, very interesting phenomenon. I mean, certainly in my educational experience, we see a phenomenon in the Jewish world today of people returning to their heritage, people getting more involved, both in studying and in performance. And uh, it's happening all over the globe. It's not only in Boston, it's happening all throughout North America, US, Canada, all throughout the world. As a matter of fact, it's an interesting thing. They did a study a year ago in Israel, a, a poll of the entire Jewish people in Israel. And they asked people, are you more religious or less religious than you were 10 years ago? And it's a, an astounding figure. More than 80% of the people said more religious in the last 10 years. And the question is why? Why is this happening? Why now? You know, it's very interesting. If you look back from, say, 1880 until 1980, for 100 years, it was kind of going the other way. Our ancestors were kind of moving away from the tradition. And in the last 20, 30 years, we see this movement back, back towards Judaism, more learning, more observance. The question is why? So again, this is a very short talk. I'm just in a few minutes going to throw out some ideas as perhaps at least my experience where I've seen why people are reaching towards their Jewish tradition. I'd like to offer two ideas. One, I think, has to do with family, family structure. I, certainly, you know, we see in the world today, it's a sad phenomenon, but we find that the divorce rate today is roughly 50% in most places. And if you're unfortunate enough to live in California, it's 70%. And, uh, and you know, it's almost sad, but you know, if two people are about to get married and you have a whole question in your head, should you wish them mazel tov? Because it's a one out of two chance they might not make it. So I think people are very concerned about the stability of a family. And we find also if a family is, if you know, the parents split up, it has implications for the children. Tremendous implications being raised by a single parent. Sometimes you can have a situation, even if the parent remarries, they have a parent that wasn't the biological parent. So it's creating, and I think a lot of young people are quite concerned about that, quite concerned about the stability of the family. And when you look in traditional Jewish society, the divorce rate is less than 5%. Fascinating observation. And you'd say, oh, well, maybe that's because you know, Judaism looks askance at divorce. It's something that you're not allowed to do. But it's not true. The Torah says if a person is unhappy in a marriage, they can get divorced. It's not like uh, the Catholic uh, tradition where divorce is, 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 a, is a horrible thing. So the question is, why is that disparity? Why do we find in the non-Jewish society, in the secular society, we find that divorce is, is just exploding and in the traditional society, it seems to be not like that. And I think that is an attractive thing. And I think when people get exposed to traditional homes and they see the parents getting along so well, and it's not just a fake thing, it's, it's real. I think that's an attractive thing. And I think that that's, that's drawing people in. And that's, uh, and that's one of the selling points as to why we find this, this uh, interest today in Judaism. And I think it's because the family structure has broken down to such a large degree when, a, when an alternative that's working is, is, is available. I think people are attracted. I'd like to offer another idea as well that I think is attracting people and getting them interested in Judaism. And that is that, you know, for many people, Judaism means food. Yeah? You know, we think of Judaism in the, in the general context, what's out there, we think of bagels and lox or gefilte fish or potato pancakes, latkes, but, you know, or waving the flag, maybe, the Israeli flag. But the idea that Judaism is really a system of personal growth, a system of personal improvement, of spiritual growth and personal growth, people are, are, are unaware of the fact, but that's really what the, the heart and soul of Judaism is, is how to perfect oneself, how to develop oneself. And we see that the industry out there of self-help today and, and uh, psychology is a booming thing. Yeah, you look at the tops of the New York Times bestseller list, you find all these books on find your potential, realize your potential, six, you know, the 10 successful habits of successful people, and, all, and you see that this is a, a booming industry. And, and when you've had exposure to classical Jewish learning, you see that that's what it's really all about, is how to realize your potential, how to, how to draw out that potential, and I think that 
for many people, that's an eye-opener. The first exposure they get, and they see that it's really about developing yourself and building yourself. And especially if you've had exposure to, these, to psychology and you've had exposure to self-help books, and you see that the Torah, one, is wider. The, the range is much wider than what's often in these books and much deeper than what's in these books. And for a lot of people, I think that that's, that's a big attraction. And I think that these two things, there's many other things, I think, why people, why the societal trend is taking place. But it's certainly a very interesting observation. You travel the world and you see Jews all over the world in this last period of time have suddenly been reaching out to their tradition, getting involved with their tradition, and it's a very exciting trend. And it's a beautiful trend and we just hope it continues and that uh, people will find answers for their queries and find uh, things to help them grow and reach their potential as, as, as human beings. And it's a very interesting trend in the Jewish world, and we hope that it goes from strength to strength.